Hi, I'm Reverend Amy. Thanks for joining us for worship. Today's worship continues the celebration of Christmas. We've even included a children's time from the fourth Sunday of Advent because love is always in season, especially this time of year. So let's take a deep breath, center ourselves, and prepare to worship God. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan, the sun high as iron, water like a stone, snow had fallen. Light the candles, the hope of our hearts has been born. Sing the carols, the star to guide our spirits has ridden. Embrace your neighbor, the cradle of compassion receives us all. Believe in the mystery, the love we long for is here. Sunday in Advent. Now, if you remember, on the first Sunday in Advent, we talked with Monty the church mouse about... I hope. That's kind <laughs> of... I hope. Especially in church, we need to be people of hope. Right, Reverend Amy? Yes, hello up there, Monty. Hello. Glad you could make it back. I never left. <laughs> you know that, Reverend Amy. I'm always here. I'm an omnipresent kind of mouse. Yes, we can always count on you to be here, Monty. Thank you. And on the second Sunday in Advent, Jeremiah Bullfrog visited us. I got peace like a river in my soul. Hello, Jeremiah. Hello. Now, on the second Sunday of Advent, we talked about the peace that comes when we go with the flow of God's Spirit, like a river goes with the flow. And when life gives you obstacles, just do like that river does. And with God's help, you'll find a way around it. And eventually, you'll just wear down those jagged old rocks that are in your way. Hey, okay, that's right, Jeremiah. Yes, indeed. I'll bet that Frankie the Flamingo is up there, too. Uh-oh, Frankie, did you delay your trip to Florida one more week? I did, Reverend Amy. The weather's been too nice up here to, to head south, well, except for yesterday. 
<laughs> Besides, I got to spend one more Sunday with you. I got my pal Spanky the Sparrow and, and Louie the Cardinal with me, too. Louie's a real saint. Say hello, fellas. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Wonderful. Can you remind us what the third Sunday at Advent was? You betcha, Rev. It was joy. <laughs> the joy of my great Uncle Pinky had when he, he flew with the angels to see baby Jesus. Come to Bethlehem and see Christ whose birth that we now see. Let's all be sure to sing that joy and carry that joy with us wherever we go. Amen to that, Frankie. Amen. I'm so happy that you all could be with us during this Advent season. And today, the last candle on our Advent wreath represents... Love. <laughs> oh, well, hello there. Hello. I don't believe we've met you before. Who are you? I am the walrus. <laughs> Cuckoo Cachoo. Cuckoo Cachoo? Yes, but my friends just call me Cuckoo. I like friends fast, so you can just call me Cuckoo. Well, I'm happy to be your friend, Cuckoo. Thanks for being with us here today. My pleasure. You're such a lovely audience, I'd love to take you home. Oh, thanks. It's just something you talk about love, being that right? Yeah, the fourth Sunday in Advent is love. That's right. Well, shouldn't you be talking about love every Sunday if you're a church? Well, that's true, Cuckoo. Not just talking about it, but living it out. And sometimes we forget. It's all you need, you know. <laughs> What's that? Love. I mean, that's what it's all about, after all. God sent Jesus into this crazy world to help us not forget. To love one another and stop all our fussing and fighting. And pretending that we don't have enough to do God's work. We have more than enough. God's given us all we need. And you know what that is, Reverend? Well, I think I have a pretty good guess. It's love. That's all you need. Promise you won't forget. Well, we'll certainly try our best. Thanks, Cuckoo. And when you feel like you're slipping into old habits, remember, God loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're to share that love with each other in the world. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one, Reverend. <laughs> Just remember that, okay? Cuckoo, could you please remind us again so we won't forget? Sure, it's easy if you try. All you need is love, all together. All you need is love, love. Love is all you need. God loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. God loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. God loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you, Cuckoo. -Coo. Hey, let's say a prayer. All right, then. Dear God, how can we be so forgetful, pretending we don't have enough when you've given us all we need? Forgive us our foolishness and help us to remember that you sent Jesus to remind us. Love is all we need. Amen. Amen. One more time, everybody.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You've increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. A child is born to us. A son is given to us and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. I would like to share with you The Holy Night, written by Selma Lagerlöf, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1909. This is about a story her grandmother told her one Christmas, the story she remembered most vividly from her grandmother's stories. But to this day, after 40 years, as I sit collecting the legends about Christ that I've heard in the East, the little story of Jesus' birth that my grandmother used to tell comes to life within me. The Holy Night. It was Christmas Day when everyone had gone to church except Grandma and me. I think we were alone in the whole house. We hadn't been taken because one was too young and the other too old. And we were both sad that we hadn't been able to go to the carol singing and see the Christmas lights. But as we sat there in our solitude, Grandma began to tell a story. There was a man, she said, who went out into the dark night to borrow a fire. He went from cottage to cottage knocking. Dear friends, help me, he said. My wife has just given birth to a child, and I must make a fire to keep her and the little one warm. But it was deep night, so that all the people were asleep. No one answered him. The man walked and walked. At last he saw a fire glowing in the distance. He walked in that direction and saw that the fire was burning out in the open. A number of white sheep were sleeping around the fire and an old shepherd was watching over the flock. When the man who wanted to borrow fire came to the sheep, he saw three large dogs sleeping at the shepherd's feet. They all three awoke when he came and opened their wide mouths as if to bark but not a sound was heard. The man saw the hair stand up on their backs. He saw their sharp teeth gleaming white in the firelight, and they rushed at him. He felt one of them bite his leg, and one his hand, and one hanging on his throat. But the jaws and teeth with which the dogs were to bite would not obey them, and the man suffered not the slightest injury. Now, the man wanted to move on to get what he needed, but the sheep were so close together, back to back, that he could not get through. So the man got on the backs of the animals and walked on them to the fire, and none of the animals woke up or moved. So far, Grandma had been able to tell me undisturbed, but now I couldn't help interrupting her. Why didn't they, Grandma, I asked. You'll find out in a moment, said Grandma, continuing her story. 
When the man was near enough to the fire, the shepherd looked up. He was an old, angry man who was unkind and harsh toward human beings. And when he saw a stranger coming, he drew a long, pointed staff, which he used to hold in his hand when he was shepherding his flock, and threw it at him. And the staff went waving towards the man, but before it struck him, it swung aside and whizzed past him far out into the field. When Grandma had got that far, I interrupted her again. Grandma, why didn't the cane want to hit the man? But Grandma didn't bother to answer me. She continued with her story. Now the man came to the shepherd and said to him, Good man, help me and let me borrow a little fire. My wife has just given birth to a child, and I must make a fire to warm her and the little one. The shepherd would have preferred to say no. But thinking that the dogs could not have hurt the man, that the sheep would not have run from him, and that his staff would not have wanted to strike him, he became a little afraid and dared not refuse him what he asked. Take as much as you need, he said to the man. But the fire was almost burnt out. There were no logs or twigs left, but only a great heap of embers. And the stranger had neither shovel nor scoop in which to carry the red coals. When the shepherd saw this, he said again, Take as much as you need. And he was glad that the man would not be able to carry any fire with him. But the man bent down, picked the coals out of the ashes with his bare hands, and put them in his cloak. And the coals did not scorch his hands when he touched them, nor did they scorch his cloak. But the man carried them away as if they had been nuts or apples. But here the storyteller was interrupted for the third time. Grandma, why didn't the coal want to burn the man? You shall hear, said Grandmother, and so she went on. When that shepherd, who was such a wicked and angry man, saw all this, he began to wonder to himself, what kind of a night can this be? Since the dogs do not bite, the sheep do not scare, the spear does not kill, and the fire does not burn. He called the stranger back and said to him, What night is this, and how does it happen that all things show you compassion? The man said, I cannot tell you unless you see for yourself. And he would go away that he might soon light a fire to warm his wife and child. But then the shepherd thought that he didn't want to lose sight of the man before he had found out what all this could mean. And he arose and went after him till he found his home. Then the shepherd saw that the man had not so much as a hut to live in, but he had his wife and child lying in a rock cave where there was nothing but bare, cold stone walls. But the shepherd thought that the poor innocent child might freeze to death there in the cave, and though he was a hard man, he was moved and thought he could help the child. And he untied his knapsack from his shoulder, and from it he took out a soft white sheepskin and gave it to the strange man and said that he would let the child sleep on it. But as he showed that, he also could be merciful. His eyes were opened, and he saw what he could not see before and heard what he could not hear before. He saw that around him stood a ring of little silver-winged angels, and each held a stringed instrument, and all sang with a loud voice that tonight the Savior was born who would save the world from its sins. Then he understood how all things were so happy this night that they would do no harm. And it was not only around the shepherd that there were angels, but he saw them everywhere. They sat inside the cave, and they sat outside on the mountain, and they flew under the sky. They came walking along the road in great flocks, and as they passed by, they stopped and glanced at the child. There was such rejoicing and such joy and singing and playing, and all this he saw in the dark night, where before he could not have foreseen anything. He was so glad that his eyes had been opened, that he fell on his knees and thanked God. But when Grandma had come this far, she sighed and said, but what that shepherd saw 
we could also see. For the angels fly under the sky every Christmas night if we could only see them. And then Grandma put her hand on my head and said, Remember this, for it is as true as I see you and you see me. It is not revealed by the light of lamps or candles, and it does not depend upon moon and sun. But what is needed is that we have such eyes as can see God's glory. This year, our Christmas offering will go toward helping the relief and rebuilding effort in Kentucky after the devastating tornadoes that swept through the area recently. Because we give through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, 100% of your gift will go toward the relief effort. Overhead costs for UNCOR are taken care of in other ways so your gift can fulfill its purpose, bringing hope and love to those who are suffering from the storms. Please give generously to this effort. You can give online or by sending a check to the church marked Kentucky Relief. Spread the word to friends who are looking for a reliable organization that they can give through. Is there someone on your gift list who would be honored to have you give a gift in their name? Thank you for your caring and generosity. When we all come together to give what we can, our individual gifts grow. We can do more together. Thanks for taking part in this hope-filled effort. God of overwhelming love and grace, in this Christmas season, we come before you in prayer. We remember how you chose to live among us, declaring that our world was a worthy place for you, the Creator, to be present. And so at this time, we pray for our world and for all who live in it. We especially think this day of those for whom this is a difficult time, for those who are missing loved ones who have died or are far away, for those who are unable to be surrounded by others and who struggle with all the emphasis on family and togetherness this season. We think of all for whom the emphasis on stuff simply underscores not having enough. And we think of how grateful we are that you have sent Jesus into the world and into our lives. How might we reflect his message in our daily living? How might we share with others the true joy that Christ brings into our lives? How can we, like all creation, offer you the praise you deserve? Open our hearts, a loving God. Stretch our understandings of our world that we might find new ways to travel with others in the days to come. And we pray this all in Christ's name. And we continue in prayer, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We leave you with some fun footage of Christmas caroling on our lawn earlier in the season. But before we go, let us take with us this blessing. Now the work of Christmas begins by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks. The work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Go in peace. <laughs>